history. In this video, we will learn about nucleic acids. So what are nucleic acids? Nucleic acids are of two types, DNA and RNA. They not only carry the genetic information but also play an important role in protein synthesis and replication. DNA is found in nucleus as it is too big in size to leave the nucleus. RNA is synthesized in the nucleus but is smaller in size and can leave the nucleus easily. So it is found mainly in the cytoplasm. Also its location depends upon the type of RNA. So let's define nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are polymers. They are biopolymers that means they can only be synthesized inside the body. Polymers are made up of connected repeating units of monomers. In nucleic acids the monomer is the nucleotide. For better understanding let's have a look into different biopolymers present inside our body. Starch is a polymer made up of repeating monomers which in this case is glucose. Similarly proteins are polymers of amino acids and nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. Now for the nucleic acid structure we should understand the basic structure of a nucleotide. The basic structure is made up of three important groups sugar, nitrogenous base and the phosphate. We will discuss these groups one by one. First is the sugar group. In nucleotides sugar is pentose. The sugars present inside our body are named after the number of carbon atoms present in them. Tri stands for three hence the name triose that contain three carbon sugar. Pent is for 5, so pentose for the 5 carbon sugar and hex is for 6 carbon sugars. There are many important hexoses in the body like glucose, galactose and the mannose. The sugar present in the nucleotide is 5 carbon pentose sugar. There are two types of pentoses, ribose and the deoxyribose. Ribose being the oxidized form and deoxyribose being the reduced form. Now let's have a look at the chemical structure of the deoxyribose and the ribose sugar. There are carbon atoms which are numbered from the right in a clockwise manner and the last carbon atom is located outside the ring which is carbon number 5. An oxygen atom lies at the top. To these carbon atoms hydrogen and hydroxyl groups are attached. The difference in ribose and deoxyribose sugar lies at carbon number 2. In ribose carbon number 2 is attached to a hydroxyl group while in deoxyribose there is a hydrogen atom attached at carbon number 2. You can see that the ribose contains a hydroxyl group and deoxyribose contains only hydrogen as the term deoxy means removal of oxygen. Ribose is starting with R and it is present in RNA. Deoxy sugar is present in DNA and it is more stable form of the pentose sugar. Remember deoxy starts with the D hence it is present in the DNA. Next is the phosphate group. Four oxygen atoms are attached to a centrally present phosphorus group. Oxygen atoms are negatively charged making the phosphate a polar molecule imparting a negative charge to it. Next is the nitrogenous base. It is a nitrogenous containing organic molecule where nitrogen bonds with carbon, hydrogen and oxygen to form ring like structures. It has base like properties as it can donate electrons and hence the name nitrogenous base. Bases can be of two different types double ringed and single ringed. Single rings are called pyrimidines and the double rings are called purines. Let's have a look at purines and pyrimidines. Purines are double ring and larger in size as compared to the pyrimidines 
which are single ringed and smaller in size. There are two types of purines, adenine and guanine, whereas there are three different types of pyrimidines, cytosine, thymine and uracil. Note that a size difference helps them in pairing which we will discuss later. Both DNA and RNA contain purines, adenine and guanine. Similarly, the pyrimidine cytosine is present in both DNA and RNA, but thymine is only present in DNA and uracil is only present in RNA. For the ease, purines can be remembered as pure as two gold rings. Pure stands for purines. A of as is for adenine and G of gold is for guanine. Two is for the fact that there are two purine bases and also two represents double rings of the purines. You can see the chemical structure of the purines which are double ring structures. The numbering starts from the nitrogen of the six carbon ring. One, two, three, four, five, six and then it moves to the next ring 7, 8 and 9. The difference of adenine and guanine lies at carbon number 6 and carbon number 2. In adenine, a minor group is present at carbon number 6, whereas in guanine, the amino group is present at carbon number 2. There is a carbonyl group present in guanine at the carbon number 6. Similarly, in chemical structure of pyrimidines, which are single ring structures, numbering starts from the nitrogen at 6 o'clock position. The difference between cytosine and uracil is at carbon number 4. Cytosine has an amino group at carbon number 4, whereas uracil has a carbonyl group. Thymine also has a carbonyl group at carbon number 4 but it has an additional methyl group at carbon number 5. Now we know about individual groups in the nucleotide that is sugar, base and phosphate. Next we will learn how these structures bind to each other to form a nucleoside, a nucleotide and how these nucleotides bind to each other to form polynucleotides which can be either DNA or RNA. The base can be either purine or pyrimidine which binds to sugar which can be ribose or deoxyribose and then each phosphate group adds on. It is important to understand the difference between a nucleoside and a nucleotide. When the base combines with sugar, nucleoside is formed whereas nucleotide has three groups sugar base and phosphate. Note that addition of one phosphate is nucleoside monophosphate, addition of two phosphates is nucleoside diphosphate and addition of three phosphates are nucleoside triphosphate. Different bases combine with sugar to form their respective nucleosides. Adenine forms adenosine guanine forms guanosine, thymine forms thymidine and cytosine forms cytidine. Next we will learn how nucleoside is formed. The nitrogenous base attaches to the sugar to form the nucleoside. The C1 of the sugar attaches to the N1 of pyrimidine base and in case the base is purine, C1 of sugar attaches to the N9 of the purine base. The linkage is glycosidic linkage and it is a covalent bond which binds carbohydrates to other compounds. After the nucleoside is formed, phosphate attaches to the carbon number 5 of the sugar forming the nucleotide. The bond formed is an ester bond which is a strong covalent bond. These monomer nucleotides which consists of a base sugar and phosphate bind to each other to form polynucleotide chain which can be either DNA or RNA depending upon the 
type of sugar present in it. The phosphate group of the first nucleotide also binds to the sugar of the second nucleotide, connecting the two nucleotides together. So the phosphate attaches to carbon number 5 below and to the carbon number 3 of the nucleotide above. This process repeats again and again forming a long polynucleotide chain. If the sugar is ribose, the resulting polynucleotide chain is RNA. The backbone of the chain is made up of sugar and phosphate, whereas the nitrogenous base project from the backbone. Note that in this case, the purine bases are adenine and guanine, but pyrimidine bases are cytosine and uracil. In case of deoxyribose sugar, the polynucleotide is DNA. DNA is double-stranded. Remember that D is for deoxy and D is also for double strand. A complementary strand runs in opposite direction. If we consider DNA as a ladder, then supports of the ladder are formed by the sugar and phosphate, whereas steps are made by the bases of the complementary strands. The nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Note that uracil is not present in the DNA. Also remember that thymine is different from thiamine. Thymine is a nitrogenous base whereas thiamine is vitamin B1. The complementary bases of the two strands are held together by the hydrogen bonds. Complementary base pairing follows a universal rule that adenine always binds to thymine and guanine always binds to cytosine. Purine never binds to another purine and pyrimidine never binds to another pyrimidine. In DNA, there is only enough space to accommodate a purine and a pyrimidine between the two strands. Two purines won't fit in the DNA strand and two pyrimidines will be too far to bond to each other. Therefore, purine has to make a hydrogen bond with a pyrimidine. The structures complement each other in a way like a lock and a key. Reason why adenine binds to thymine is that bond between adenine and thymine create the similar shape as done by guanine and cytosine to accommodate the diameter of 2 nanometers. Purine can't combine with purines as they are double ring structures. Diameter of 2 nanometer can't accommodate two purines together. So purine binds to pyrimidine only. Adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thymine and guanine forms three hydrogen bonds with cytosine. Now when we look at adenine, it has two sites available for bonding, N1 and the amino group. In order to make a hydrogen bond with both, we need a particular configuration of hydrogen and electronegative atom. These conditions are met by thymine and not cytosine. Therefore, the adenine binds to thymine. Applying similar analysis to guanine, only cytosine can make hydrogen bonds with guanine. Hence, adenine makes hydrogen bonds with thymine and guanine makes hydrogen bonds with cytosine. Remember, at GC, adenine with thymine and guanine with cytosine. So this was an introductory video about nucleic acids. In subsequent videos, we will study in depth about DNA, RNA, the nucleotide metabolism and many other topics. Make sure to subscribe the channel for upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.